The centre was started 26 years ago. Education um, is one of the key activities of the centre because we really believe that education is the key to the pathway out of poverty. The Makuru slum villages have a population of around about 600,000 people. Most of the people live on less than a dollar of the day. Our services include um, the primary schools, four primary schools with an enrolment of about 5,000 children, a new secondary school. We have this year our first secondary school students undertaking their secondary school examinations. We have a skills training program, a sponsorship program to secondary education and um, an adult education program. It's the rehabilitation of street boys. Uh, we teach them informal primary school classes for the smaller boys and carpentry and art to give a skill to the older boys. We run a general health clinic for general preventive and uh, curative treatment as well as a home-based community health care service. We work with community health workers who are voluntary in the community. We've installed uh, about 11 water points in the last four years. During the last four years, the European Union has been a major donor for most of those programs, and we're very grateful. Needless to say, there are many other donors who have supported us, and we rely on them to help us to continue providing the services of Makura Promotion Centre. Education is one of the most important building blocks for the healthy development of any society. It's absolutely essential for poorer communities since education empowers people with skills for employment and a voice to articulate their needs to governments and services providers. Primary school education caters for 5,000 children ranging in age from 4 years to 16 years. St. Bakita's school is located on the same site as the head office and skills training center. It has an enrollment of about 1,000 pupils. The classrooms are built of iron sheets. Access to the school has been improved with the recent completion of the road and now bridge over the Ngong River. The river remains heavily polluted because of the rubbish and sewage that is frequently dumped into it. With one of our partners, we are implementing a safer water program in this school along with the other MPC schools. The school has continued to do well in uh, national exams. Most of our teachers are trained in guiding and counseling and they are able to help the children cope with the situation they are going through both at home and in schools. Uh, I was in Bakisa Primary School 11 years ago. I finished, I passed. I went to Kambwe Girls High School. I finished in 2004. I got an A. I was in the papers. I was number 59 countrywide in my time. Uh, currently, I'm in my fifth year in medical school in the University of Nairobi. I'm finishing in a month's time. I'll be graduating this December. So next year, I'll be going for my internship. And after that, I'll become a, a fully qualified doctor. St. Catherine's Primary School has an enrollment of about 1,000 children. In recent years, St. Catherine's students have been excelling in football. They hold the Kerrigan Cup trophies for both competitions for two years in a row. The impact of Mukuru Promotion Center on the Mukuru community is so immense because if it were not for them, some of these children would not be in school. Despite having the very disadvantageous background of you know, malfunctioning families and extreme poverty, at least they are able to feel they are in a school and they can do what is done in, in normal schools. I live in Marigwini village, which is one of the Mkuru, Mkuru slums. I joined Scout because um, it is educative through the Scout camps and trips that we have actually been educated and we have benefited from it a lot. Apart from the ordinary classes, uh, we also have a special class called Remedio Class. I came as a volunteer to help the children also who have grown up in slum like me. 
as a remedial teacher. I help the children who are slow. They are slow learners from class 4 to class 7. Kayaba School is located in the very heart of Kayaba Slum. Back in 1985, when first constructed, it had an enrollment of 200 children that has grown very fast over the years and now caters for 1,200 children. Apart from being a sponsor, um, MPC has done a lot to develop this school to what it is. Uh, one, we know that uh, for a long time, our children who have done very well uh, at the highest level, that is class 8, have always had a sponsorship to secondary schools. Uh, MPC for a long time has also been employing the, the, the teachers and uh, subordinate staff that uh, MPC has been paying. This school could not be what it is. A very fine new permanent school has been constructed by the German government in collaboration with the Ministry of Education of Kenya. It was occupied for the first time at the beginning of the third term 2010. When I'm in school, I feel, I feel secure and the time I'm very secure, I feel like, I, I feel like I'm with my parents even I, even I forget my problems that I have. Uh, the school was like a mother to us. It used to provide us with some food. I can talk of food because at, at some point, being in the slum, we, are, we were unable to have the meals. After I finished class eight, I went to secondary school, and now I'm back into Mukuru Primary School. I'm currently working as a volunteer teacher, and I'm glad to be in this school. Largest of our primary schools with an enrollment of about 1,320 children. St. Elizabeth is known for its excellent performance in the Kenya National Schools Music Festival. The Lunga Lunga Choir also has the distinction of producing a CD of their music. Uh, music has taken us far. From that year we started from the zonal level, we could not go far. But uh, over the years we've been able to become the national champion. St. Elizabeth is also being rebuilt by the German government. Currently we have 1,411 boys and girls learning from pre-unit to standard eight. Since I joined this school from class one, we have got so many benefits that I've gained, I myself, and not forgetting all the pupils. First, gaining the knowledge. When you're a child, when you're born, you don't know anything. But the first day you join school, your mind is loaded with something. So you gain a lot of knowledge, even skills. If you didn't know how to write, you, you, from there, the teacher that is teaching you, you know from there. Because when you are born, you didn't know even how to hold a pen. This class that you are in is the smallest age of children, early childhood education, and they have really benefited. I was here in St. Elizabeth from year 1995 to year 2002, where I completed my class eight. A donor came into my life and they took me through my secondary school education. And the, I then joined Kenya Institute of Mass Communication and where, where I studied journalism and now I'm a journalist. MPC opened the doors of St. Michael's Secondary School to 45 students in Form 1 in January 2008. These pioneer students will be the first to sit for the final exams Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education in 2011 and now the total student population is 160 from Form 1 through to Form 4. We interact very well with the students. In fact, the students are very good about solving problems. But they can come and tell me, sister, we can do it this way. Or this is why things are as they are, so let's try. So the students themselves participate fully in the way in which we run our school, solve our problems and plan our future. Now, our plans for the future would be to expand because we're inundated with people looking for places which we don't have. So I believe that the school is having an impact on the way that students think, the way they live their lives, their values, their learning, their own human rights 
They're learning how to demand them, which is very important for them, because many people living in their conditions are deprived of their human dignity. The basketball court is now receiving its new fence around the field that will protect the balls from damaging laws. MPC runs a sponsorship program to enable students who qualify but who cannot afford to pay fees to assess secondary education. The sponsorship program that I'd like to explain is uh, going back in its history to the 1990s and from then it has expanded continually. There was a great increase after the primary school um, education became free and later on when the government added a subsidy to the secondary schools. So that has enabled us to, at this time, be able to sponsor 247 students to, in our sponsorship program. We are very much indebted to our donors for enabling us to sponsor so many students. We depend completely on them because we have to balance our enrollment with our funding. We trust on the goodwill and the generosity of our donors to continue and even to expand this part of our program in the future. Through the sponsorship, I have been able to gain education. I now have knowledge in various subjects and I know now what I want to do in future. I've also learned my weaknesses and strength. Also, I've gained courage. The Skills Training Center is especially designed to important practical skills to students with a view to future employment. The courses include dressmaking, hairdressing, knitting, crafts including beading, weaving and tie and dye cloth, catering, computer studies and self-awareness skills. I joined Bakita Skills Center for hairdressing six months. After some months, I came and then I opened my own salon. The center has a production unit that accepts orders for items. The unit produces uniforms for all the primary schools and St. Michael's Secondary School, the rehabilitation center, dust course for the clinic staffs and the skills training center students' uniform. In 2008, with the funding from the European Union, Mukuru Promotion Center introduced an adult education component into its activities. The overriding goal of the program is to reduce the illiteracy level in the community. I joined the program last year. I climbed Mount Kenya during the weekend. It is, all, it, it is colder than anywhere else in Kenya. Mary Immaculate Clinic is open to all residents of the Mukuru villages. Approximately 100 people from the slum area attend the clinic daily. There is a minimum charge of 50 shillings for each visit. Uh, the clinic was started with the thought of the children within the schools and the community to provide them with health care, which was not readily available to them due to the high costs and considering the poverty of the community we reach. Services include general preventive and curative medicine, maternal and child health, including prevention of mother-child transmission of HIV-8, and anti-malnutrition unit, which is staffed by professionals from St. Elizabeth School of Community Health and Social Work, Slovakia. With the escalation of HIV-AIDS among the population, a voluntary counseling and testing center was established in January 2004. The center offers free HIV-AIDS counseling and testing to the people in the surrounding slums. Volunteer community health workers and registered nurses visit the slum areas on a rotational basis daily and attend to those unable to visit the clinic or those who may be bedridden. The Mary Immaculate Rehabilitation Center was established in 1995 for the many street children. Now, with the opening of the new dormitory, we cater for about 65 boys who participate in a one-year-long program. We conduct non-formal primary teaching for whom it is appropriate and carpentry and art for the older boys. After lunch, they engage in extracurricular activities, art, music, gardening, scouting, and some craft work. Group and individual counseling is an integral part of the program and is carried out on a very regular basis. The goal of the program is to reintegrate the boys to family, if possible, or to a meaningful life off the streets. 
There, there was a time in my life I, I gave up and I went to the streets. A social worker came and he asked me what I want to do. And I said I wanted to write my name. And I enjoyed reading. I performed exemplary and I got a place to study environmental science at Kenyatta University. This, this was a dream come true. A time in my life where I wanted to know how to write my name. I could sit in front of a professor, learning not just how to write my name, but becoming a professional. Mukuru Promotion Center has changed me. Mukuru Promotion Center was founded in 1985 to support and empower the Mukuru communities. In the intervening years, we have supported primary education, founded a secondary school along with sponsoring students to post-primary education run an adult education program, operated a health clinic and community health program, run a skills training centre that provides students with marketable skills and a rehabilitation program for street boys. With the continued support from our donors, the Sisters of Mercy, our staff and the Makuru community will continue our mission.